Today I have really interesting knit sewing to share. A really, really different neckline, super unique design. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and today I have really interesting knit sewing to share quite different to other things you've seen me sew with a knit fabric and I always love exploring unique designs it's a really striking look and it's a brand new pattern from Sinclair Patterns called Indra Top there are several variations to this top but what they all have in common is that they have an asymmetric neckline so from the shoulder, the right shoulder, you have a normal type of shoulder seam and then it's gonna go across and finish underneath the arm there. This neckline is finished with that really neat facing inside from the front and the back. And you can choose to leave it like that and just have like a one shoulder top and wear a strapless bra. Or you can go ahead and add a full strap that's gonna give it that asymmetric look that's gonna end up on the back too and you're gonna have an asymmetric back. Or you can choose a more simplified version that has a regular back. It's all non-asymmetric at the back, but you have a half strap to sew onto here that will still give you that asymmetric look. So that different strap is gonna be on your left shoulder. So other than all those neckline options, you have sleeve options like making it sleeveless, short sleeve, all the different types of lengths you'll find on the pattern piece there. And for the length, you'll find four different length cut lines there on the pattern. I've chosen the second one, which is gonna hit the mid hip. There's a longer one and then there's a dress version as well. Because the Indra top is a brand new pattern, it's 20% off for a period of time, usually a little over a week. Now that's 20% off because it's a brand new release, but there's a whole site-wide sale going on through the 4th of July and that's 25% off all the other patterns. You don't need any code. And when you go to check out, you'll see the discount there. I've made a lot of Sinclair patterns, always had a great result. I have a playlist down below linked for you. I film tutorials for all the patterns that I review as well. You also find my general affiliate link that will just take you to the page and you can browse. And I'll also have a specific affiliate link for the Indra top, which is what I'm reviewing and showing you today. Remember, you don't pay anything extra if you use my affiliate link. It's just one way that you can support my work here because I receive a small commission back. One of the ways I make an income doing what I do. You need light to medium weight knits that are going to stretch at least 30 to 50% both horizontally and vertically. So if you check your fabric and it doesn't have any vertical stretch or give, just don't use it. It's just not going to be comfortable. It's not going to work. You need fabrics that are not so flimsy. So a big no-no for this pattern is rayon spandex, bamboo spandex, modal spandex. Those are just too soft and too floppy to hold up this type of neckline. And those types of fabrics aren't really gonna work with a neat facing that well, ever. So put those aside and choose something like double brush poly, an athletic knit, cotton lycra, some rib knit, some rayon French terry. Athletic knits are also gonna work. You know I'm a really big fan. Just make sure you have spandex content and that you have good recovery here and other notions you're going to need is trico knit interfacing you're going to need to stabilize the neckline partially with that also the shoulders and you're going to need some elastic if you have clear elastic that stretches nicely that's going to work otherwise you can use regular elastic it can be a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch that's just to give all this asymmetric neckline structure so that it doesn't end up gaping and stretching out you'll find sizes 0 to 30 us and sinclair patterns also has height files you choose that file first whether you're petite regular or tall height i use the tall file and it's perfect i rarely need to make any fitting adjustments and it's going to be fitted here on the upper chest and bust area it does need to be that way so it's not floppy but then you're gonna have a little bit more space at the waist around five inches of ease and around the hips around three inches of ease. This is my favorite type of neat top that's fitted here and then it just sort of skims over the rest of your body. I love that. Other than choosing the tall file and size 16, I made zero fitting adjustments, nothing whatsoever. I just cut it out and went straight to my fabric because I've been sewing a lot of this brand for a couple of years now and I'm really confident in the drafting and that it's going to fit really well. And you also have progressive cup sizes here. So at my size 16, it's drafted with a CD sewing cup size in there. So it's perfect. I don't need to worry about anything and it's all good. I am a person that loves asymmetry in clothes, in life, everywhere. I just am really drawn to it and I know not everyone is, but I really, really like an asymmetric neckline. 
and there's so many ways to sew them you know it's super different if it's a woven and for this neat style it was different as well and it was really really enjoyable i have filmed what's most interesting which is the neckline there are a few things that you need to be aware of when you're cutting a design that's asymmetric so i will show you that and how to sew the facing how to stabilize the strap the neckline all that fun stuff let's see Whichever version you're making, you need to cut the front piece with the fabric right sides up and the pattern right sides up. For this top, I'm using the back that's also asymmetric. So that is the piece that I'm also going to place with the fabric right sides up. There is another option where you just have a bag that's on the fold. In that case, you would fold all of this away and cut your back piece on the fold like normal so that you wouldn't really have to worry about if the fabric is right or wrong sides up because then it would be a symmetrical piece. For the facings, you need to cut them with the fabric wrong sides up. That's just the way this pattern is. So make sure that is correct so it ends up being on the right side. So I've got my front facing there. You can see the printing on the pattern and the fabric wrong sides up. This is the full strap and it's got a sort of a very unusual type of shape there and it's cut on the fold lengthwise there so it's going to end up being like that. Here I have the front and the back right on top of each other right sides together and you can see that there's an asymmetric neckline. This is one shoulder seam, one armhole and then you have nothing right there. There is an option where you can actually just make it like that and wear it just with a uh, shoulder fully exposed use a strapless bra but I have a full strap here this is a piece that's going to be folded onto itself and that's going to be attached right there giving you the asymmetric neckline look here I've got facings for the front and the back and my short sleeve because of the way this is sewn and because it's a knit and we don't want that neckline to start stretching out and gaping it's recommended that you stabilize this slanted edge with tricot knee interfacing so it's hard to see because I've used white. It does stretch a little, but it'll make it a little bit more stable than if you did nothing. This is the back piece, and I've also stabilized the shoulder area there so that it doesn't hang and start stretching out when I attach on the sleeve. And along the front and the back necklines, you'll see different types of notches. Make sure you mark them so that you can match on your facings later on. This is the full strap piece. This was cut on the fold like this lengthwise, but now it's extended. We have the full piece. Now on one of these ends at the bottom, you're going to have double notches right there. This edge that has those double notches is going to match the front and that over there is going to be the back. Around here, this is going to be the armhole. So I've drawn a little line with a friction pen in red just in the center and looking at this exactly like this with the fabric wrong sides up from that center that way I'm going to cut a piece of elastic the same length and just sew it on there with a zigzag stitch just to stabilize that because this is going to end up being part of the neckline and you don't really want that to stretch out so I am going to do that although it's optional I am going to take every precaution to get a really stable neckline right there so just along there I'm going to sew on an elastic I'm not going to cut it any shorter I'm cutting it the same length and just make sure I'm not stretching anything out and I'll just sew that with a zigzag stitch to hold it in place here it is folded onto itself wrong sides together this is the armhole and at the bottom this section is going to be on the front neckline and this other section is going to be on the back neckline I did make sure to mark that really nicely on my fabric so I know the easiest way to know which is the front is that towards the side you have two little notches there and if you're wondering what about this, is it going to be seen? No, because this is actually the part that's going to be touching your skin. This is the part of the neckline that's going to be visible, so it's going to be clean there. And the zigzag area is going to be on the inside of the garment. So don't worry about it showing. Just make sure you sew it just like you saw me doing it here. This is the front neckline. Make sure it's facing right sides up like this. This is the front facing. You're going to have little notches along there to match it up. As you can see, the facing is a little bit shorter. Not that much, but you will have to stretch the facing a little bit to match. And that's just to help keep everything together and not gape. But let's move this aside for a little bit. This is the side seam here. This is the shoulder. So on this area, on your front, you're going to have a double notch right there. Take your strap piece. Make sure you're looking at it like this. You have the fold right there. You have that zigzag area looking up at you. And along this edge, you're going to have a double notch on the side right there that's going to match the front for now we need to align this right here right sides together with the neckline matching it all up this edge is going to reach 
the center and there's a notch right there to match as well. So I'm gonna do some quick hand basting to keep that in place and then I'm gonna bring the facing over and match it up and we're gonna have this area of the strap sandwiched between the neckline and the facing. What I've done over here is just hand baste that on so it doesn't move anywhere. I did it quite away from the edge so it doesn't get caught in my seam. Then I placed my facing and aligned the side and the shoulders and then the notches in between. You can see the facing is just a hair smaller. And now I'm just gonna go through all the layers with my narrow zigzag stitch. I'm gonna make sure the feed dogs do their thing. I'm not gonna be pulling the fabric or stretching it in any way if I can help it. I'm using a quarter inch presser foot. I think that really helps. You can use this presser foot if you're doing the narrow zigzag. Make sure you keep all the raw edges together as you sew these layers. Once we get to the part that has the strap in between, it gets a little bulky. There are quite a few layers there. So there it is. You can see the facing. This facing is gonna go to the inside and then we're gonna have this strap coming out right here and that's what's going to give you that asymmetric neckline look. This is why this section was stabilized with elastic to keep it nice and stable. So we're going to repeat the same process that we did over here but with the back just having all of this attached and dangling. I'm going to put all the top over here to that side. Bring my back right here so I can see it. This is the back neckline here that we're looking at wrong sides up now. <laughs> this is the side seam and it goes curving up to the shoulder. This is this area that has been stabilized and now keeping this strap under there just as it is we are going to align these right. So in the same way that I did with the other side I'm just going to quickly hand baste that and keep it in place. I know this looks a little messy here but all I've done is fix the back strap onto the back neckline here right sides together if I stretch this out, you can see the strap coming from over there. We've already done all the front business. This is the armhole. This is the side seam. So I'm just going to flip this back to how it was, like this. Again, we're looking at the side with a zigzag there on the strap, looking up at you. And just flipping it like this now, I'm going to take my facing. This facing also has notches to match, double notches. So these are going to match right here. Also a little shorter. The process is exactly the same. I'm just going to go ahead and pin and sew all these layers together the same way that we did with the front. <laughs> We have attached the front and the back together in some way, just on one side. The facings are loose, but they have finished the neckline in some way right there. And we have the full strap sandwiched between there. Now, when you look at this, this is the folded edge. This is the edge that has the zigzag. You can see the zigzag looking up at you. That means it's on the wrong side of the garment, like it should be. So in essence, that shoulder has been finished. There's no seam on the shoulder. It's just part of the strap but we still have this shoulder hanging loose right here. This is how you want to pin your shoulder and your facings together. We're gonna to sew them all as one seam. This is the shoulder. You can see that's stabilized with interfacing. This is the back. The front hasn't been stabilized and the two facings sort of match in shape right there. Make sure to put a pin to match those seams right there. I'm not gonna be removing that pin. Make sure you have that tiny seam allowance going towards the facing here. And now I'm just gonna sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance right there. Now at this point, we have both shoulder seams done, the actual seam with the shoulder and the one that belongs to the strap where there's no seam right there. This is the facing coming over to cover most of this shoulder seam. I'm not gonna worry about surging it and most of it is gonna be covered with the facing anyway. Now what we're gonna do is stabilize this neckline. This facing, we're just gonna remove it and open it so we can see the seam allowance here. You can use clear elastic or regular elastic. I'm using regular elastic, three eighths of an inch wide. You can also use a quarter of an inch wide elastic. You'll find in the pattern how long you have to cut this out for each size. So what we're gonna do is extend the facing, push the seam allowance towards the facing. And what we're gonna do is sort of like under stitch, but with the elastic and with a zigzag stitch. So you can clearly see my black seam. We're going to put the elastic right next to it there. I'm going to pin it and I'm going to go ahead and pin it all the way to the other edge where I'm supposed to reach all the way to this other side. I'm going to stop the elastic a little before though, just a tiny bit. I'm going to trim actually about three eighths of an inch and leave this free for the side seams. I don't want elastic there, it might get a little bulky. So over here I'm going to trim off that little bit as well. 
I'm gonna divide my elastic in half and then divide my neckline in half and pin it there and actually the seam right here that is the middle of the neckline is a little fiddly just make sure your elastic hasn't twisted so you can see it's a little shorter and from here to the other side as well make sure the elastic is straight to clarify we're only sewing on the facing layer so make sure your strap there is out of the way and that you're not catching it we're just catching the seam allowance to the facing it's like you're under stitching but from the wrong side and with a zigzag and putting an elastic in there i'm using a medium size zigzag here i'm aligning the edge of my elastic to my seam this you might find it easier to divide all of this into quarters but I think half is okay for me I'm almost up to the half point where the shoulder and the facing seams meet but let me just show you how this looks like you can see the seam allowance is tucked in under the elastic seam allowance is going towards the facing and from the inside this is like under stitching but it's just a zigzag and there's an elastic in there so this is actually going to keep the facing inside and also make it really stable. I'll just keep going now. Here I'm at the iron and I've got my top wrong sides up. Here's the facing, there's the elastic inside and I'm just giving it a good nice steam. Now the next step is to top stitch the facing down. You're gonna have armholes on the side of the strap. It'll be a double layer armhole. <laughs> that doesn't matter. You can sew in your sleeve on the flat there if you want. Or like I do it, I just sew the side seams first get a completed armhole and then sew my sleeve in on the round. You've probably seen me do this before, but I like to hand baste the facing down while the garment is flat here on the ironing board. And then I'm just gonna top stitch it in place. I'm gonna use a narrow zigzag. It's gonna look like a straight stitch anyway, and that's gonna fix that in place. This is my first Indra top. It's an athletic knit. I've used it before to make a maxi skirt and I had just enough, just, just enough for this top. I was initially thinking of making it sleeveless if I didn't have enough for the sleeves, but I was able to squeak the sleeves out and I'm really, really happy that happened. I just needed more tops with sleeves. I usually just make them all sleeveless. And here is this asymmetric neckline. I think it's really nice. This is the side that has a full strap. You can see the neckline goes like this. So this added strap that's in a double layer is gonna be on your left shoulder. If you sew it as per the pattern and you cut it, you know, with the fabric right sides up, that's how it's gonna end up being. And I love it. It's all stabilized inside with elastic, as you saw, to keep it in place. It's not gonna gape or deform over time. The facing is top stitched. You won't be able to see it that much. I did use a narrow zigzag for that, just so it doesn't move and it stays in place. And for this one, I also used a narrow zigzag for my hems. I just wanted it really discreet and I thought a twin needle was gonna be super visual. You saw that I did most of the steps of the neckline with the actual sewing machine. I always just find it easier to manage that way. And I find that sometimes when you sew a facing onto a neckline with a serger, it can end up sort of stretching it out sometimes. I feel I have better control with the sewing machine. You can see the facing is understitched right there with that zigzag, but it's got the elastic inside and it's just keeping it all in place. I like to hand baste my facing before top stitching so it's really, really flat. So that's how it looks inside. I really love the result. I love the ease, how it fits, how it looks. It's just a really elevated top in my opinion. So let's see it styled a couple of ways. Here is my Indra top from Sinclair Patterns. This is a size 16 with a tall file. I've got my off-white jeans that match the print here on this top. There are lots of length options. I like this mid-hip length. I have used this type of athletic knit before and this was a little leftover I had just enough for this top and I love the look. It's like an elevated t-shirt because of the neckline you can see up closer I am all about asymmetry the construction method here it was really fun all of that neckline is stabilized with elastic inside and a bit of knit interfacings you do need some precautions for this to lay nice and flat and not gape I really love it it's got a facing inside that's been top stitched it was a really fun technique and different to the typical knit sewing that you do and I have a short sleeve here it fits really well there's enough ease it's really comfortable you can do it sleeveless or do other lengths for the sleeve and I have the asymmetric back option as well really really nice I love it paired with a lighter colorway on my bottoms but I know I have more options in my wardrobe with darker bottoms so you see other styling options next Here's 
my intro top again this time with a pair of knit shorts also by Sinclair patterns they like shorter culottes they're just a wider type of short with a pair of sneakers that are my skin tone really kind of casual outfit that I could be super comfortable in but feel really good because I know this top has an extra special detail that the neckline that doesn't make it so so basic I think this print is just there to catch everyone's attention and I'm not against that <laughs> I really love this print so so nice I am dressed up again in a little pencil skirt with a flounce. This is a self-drafted pattern and I made this skirt years ago and happily go to church like this and feel fine. I wouldn't feel like I'm too casual <laughs> and again it's just great. I like the ease, it's fitted at the bust but then it skims over the waist and hips. It's just the most perfect comfortable knit top to wear. <laughs> Now the last look is casual as well, black linen pants, very classic trousers, cap toe heels and this could be another semi casual outfit as well. With the type of print there's not many colours I can pair on the bottom but I think the off white and the black are a good choice and give me lots of styling options here. All the types of occasions I can want, I'd be happy to wear my intro top and I really love how it turned out. After styling my indra top with off-white pants and black bottoms, I have the classic denim skirt that will go with everything. Denim skirts tend to be quite boring, but if you pair it with a wild top like this, it just makes the outfit much more interesting. It's just that tone of blue in denim, it just matches everything. The indra top here is no exception, and it makes it also casual. I have really, really comfy shoes, and I'd be so, so comfortable all day. So that was a bit of a workout changing to all the looks but I always enjoy it. I really wish I'd had time to make another one but as you can see in the sewing segment and my descriptions this is not something you make in one hour like a lot of knit tops it takes a little while longer. Also the filming, the editing, yeah that took ages. I know my next version is going to be in a solid and I want to do this strap in the same color solid but just another different texture fabric. That is my vision. So I'm just going to try to put those fabrics together and hopefully I can show you my second version in the future. Now if you were wanting to do the one with the full back, the one that doesn't have this type of asymmetric back, it's actually even easier to sew because the strap here is only half of it. You would still sandwich this smaller strap into this area would be exactly the same. But then the back would just be complete and you'd have a little facing on the back. So the way that I sewed this shoulder together would just be the same basically a little easier and the instructions are really good. I wasn't able to film that version but at least I got the one that has the most steps involved which is the one that has this on the front and the back. Love it. <laughs> this was so so fun. It's definitely not a neat top you sew in an hour. There are a few steps that take a little longer just making sure you cut this the right way, that you stabilize those areas. Just a little step that in the end they're going to be really worth it. Get a garment that looks and hangs really nicely and it's going to stand the test of washing and all that. It's really worth your time to make something that is so well thought out in the drafting and design and the way it's sewn together. I love the way the neckline looks, the ease, just everything, you know. If I had time, I would have made more as usual. Highly recommend, it's a really, really interesting look. This is not a basic neat top, it just takes it up a notch and I really enjoy that with Sinclair patterns. Don't forget to check out the Indra top, 20% off for a period of time. And remember there's also a site-wide sale, all of Sinclair patterns 25% off the mid-year sale. No code needed, very easy, you can browse. There's a lot of good patterns there for you to have a look at. As always, all the information is in the description box below and I pin it on the first comment so it's easy for you to find. That's all from me today and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.